because uh, I, I, I just have to ask, what do you mean when you said uh, you looked in the mirror and you realized you were a fraud? Oh, uh, so uh, on the jazz cruise in 2014, I, uh, I think it was 14, 13, um, uh, they were doing interviews with the, all the artists and stuff. And, um, and this guy was talking about um, education. And because I guess he was a teacher, I don't know. Um, and, uh, and he was asking me all the stuff and he was praising and saying all these like really, really nice things. And, and, and I just reminded, I, and I didn't have any intention of telling the story because I kind of did, it was kind of personal, you know? And I, when I did, when I had this epiphany, I didn't broadcast it. I just changed my shit, you know? Mm -hmm. I just wasn't like, you know, like, you know, to, to, to talk about it at that moment would have been, seemed very self-indulgent and self-congratulatory. And that's the opposite of what the story is. The, stop, the story is not about uh, 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 self-congratulation. The story is about self-reflection, about how you have to do a deep dive to find out whether or not you're living a life of authenticity. Because remember when we started? Remember when we started on this page uh, at the beginning of this interview? Remember when we started this? Mm -hmm. We talked about you, you brought up uh, your values. Yeah. Okay. And to me, I run my page on based on my core values, and I, I, and when everybody does that, when you decide what your core non-negotiable core values, what your core values are, and when you're willing to stand behind them with your name and live them that's when we're all going to see social media elevate at that point so you have to find everybody has to find their own individual non-negotiable core values and one of mine is um uh truth and truth was like he was saying all these uh, things and then i told him the story and then it kind of went it kind of blew up a little bit people were talking about it and the, what happened was I looked in the mirror and he was saying all these things, the cutting edge. He was saying uh, revolutionary um, uh, about me as an educator. Okay? And I had had a lot of success at that point. I had, you know, you know, I wrote these groundbreaking texts and da da da, changed the game and that kind of stuff. But none of the things he was saying was true. Uh, at that when before this and I, I told him like I said I did a deep dive and I, because all I was doing was pushing the can down the road okay mm -hmm. at, up until I had this epiphany I was just doing all I was doing was teaching the shit I was taught mm -hmm. that's what most teachers do yeah that's well, yeah it won't work for me so I'm a, I'm a success so I'm just going to teach you that shit I was a complete, that's when I said, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, what are you doing? All I'm doing is taking the same shit and just like, it's like that's not, that's, that's the opposite of education. That's lazy. It's just lazy. It's all it's doing is making me feel better about the shit I was taught. That was my deep dive. That's when I said, you're a fraud. You need to train students for the music business and the music world that's awaiting them, mm. not the one that's awaiting that was awaiting you. You need to up your game and make everything that you do relevant for a young student of today, not just because you suffered through a whole bunch of classical snare drum shit that they're never going to see in their whole damn life that I suffered through it, that I'm gonna now, it's like I suffered through it, so now you're gonna have to suffer through it. That is a crappy way to run an educational facility. So I went down and I did a deep dive on every single thing, went through every single text, and I threw out a lot of sacred cows. And, um, and I flipped my classroom too. Uh, so I'm very, I was very much inspired by a guy named Sal Khan, um, the guy who runs Khan Academy. Yeah who's a, a bazillion times smarter than I'll ever be. And I was just could not believe how uh, elegant and new his teaching delivery was. And I said, that's it right there. I said, that's, he's my mentor. <laughs> and I took that and I was like, there it is. You know? So I flipped my classroom. A lot of the work that I would have them do here, I then had them do at home. Hmm. 
and a lot of stuff that they were doing at home, I would have them do here. And it has changed everything for me as far as my uh, educational. Now I'm now I'm comfortable getting complimented because I don't feel like I'm a fraud. <laughs> I'm actually making a contribution to hopefully elevate the game a little bit. So that was that that was what I meant and how I came out the other side feeling better. Yeah, you got in tune with it. Just made you take a deep look at what you actually were doing and bringing that awareness to your teaching and realizing, oh wait, I don't have the the con the deep awareness about why I'm even doing what I'm doing that way. No, if I could not explain it, I saw what you just said is perfect. By the way, everything you just said is right on the money. And I I, uh, I if I couldn't explain why I was teaching it mm -hmm. to a student of today. It was out. Mm -hmm. It had to have relevance. It has to have relevance. Now, if a student wants, uh, listen, when a student gets to a certain level, if I got like a real player in here, you know, somebody who's going to who wants to go deep and is like thirsty. Like there are some kids that come in here and I'm like kind of like freaked out because it's hard for me to keep up. Right. Like they're thirsty. Thirsty, thirsty. Give, 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 give. They just want input. Like I just, I have to keep like just providing input because they just keep absorbing it so fast. You know, those are the students that- Oh like, yeah, yeah, you're shedding before they even show up. You're like, oh my God, if I don't shed. Yeah, they're like, you know, so uh, like that's, and those students are, you know, they're rare and they're great, you know? And I'm like, okay, this is like, I can't like, like as soon as I like feed, like I call them little, little animals because they come in and they eat. They just eat information. They eat it and they're gone and then they're more. <laughs> you know, they're like, so I'm like, you know, you got to be ready for those. You got to be ready for those thirsty, those thirsty little animals who come in and they're just like, their brains are just like, and it's so great to like, to, you know, uh, expose them to a piece of music. So that's the one thing about like Spotify or like, I hate, I hate streaming and what it does also, but, um, uh, but it's here and it's, it's, it's silly to even talk about it. Um, so uh, it's part of every kid's life. So I'll tell, like, say I, a uh, kid comes in and, uh, uh, introduce them to Snarky Puppy or something like that, okay? And you know, they probably already know about Snarky but, because Snarky's everywhere, but they come in and I'm like, all right, I'm like, now, I said, let's start up the radio and like, you know, and let's just listen. And then we start discovering like all these new artists that are based on the Snarky radio, mm. you know? And there's all these, and then they come in the next week with like 10 artists that they have questions about. And I'm like, what have I done? <laughs> yeah, you're like, uh, what, who's that? <laughs> I'm like, uh, can we, I'm not sure who that is. Can we, uh, you know, like, uh, uh, listen together. Uh, let's listen together. Yeah. 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 At three minutes and 16 seconds, there's a th inverted 30 second note slam a flu hole. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, Look Oh my God. Real teaching skills. How can you maintain the frame of teacher when you're, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I'm like, I think, uh, am I supposed to be paying you now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <exactly. laughs> No, it's great. It's it's really really great because those uh, the you know those thirsty minds that come in. It's like you know that's one of the great things that flipping my classroom has done. It it gives us for students like that. It gives us way more time to talk about music mm -hmm. instead of rigor. Yeah. So rigor is like we get into like you know rigor can suck up like a, a whole lot of time, and that's what they do that at home. Now we can talk about music here. It's done. It's done wonders to my classroom. 